Looks like this would be a need that they need to fill. All right, pick is in. We're on the clock. Jalen Rieger, wide receiver, TCU to the Eagles. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Pack. I, I'm on it. Nice. It's Justin Jefferson on the clock nice. right now. Teams make shitty picks. It's not a matter of if, but when. Through the power of the retro mod on Madden 22, we're going to go back in time and redraft some iconic bust picks to dream replacements from the same draft and rebuild the teams that suffered from the bum-ass picks. Today is potentially the most recent we'd go back, and that is to the 2020 NFL draft where my beloved Philadelphia Eagles drafted Jalen Rager in the first round, a player who was a consensus day two pick over superstar LSU wide receiver Justin Jefferson. Today we correct that and go a few years into the future with what if the Philadelphia Eagles drafted Justin Jefferson in the 2020 NFL draft. So we're not picking exactly where Philadelphia was picking. I think it was 16, which makes it even worse. But here we are at pick seven. Jerry Judy just went off the board to the Detroit Lions. And it is time to complete the transaction. We're going to go and grab the great Justin Jefferson in the first round. An absolute superstar. So for this series, I'm not going to like redraft the entire draft. It's more so the pick. So I tried my best to get everything else that the Philadelphia Eagles got in the 2020 draft. We got Jalen Hurts, Davion Taylor, Kevon Wallace, Jack Driscoll, John Hightower, the amazing Quez Watkins, uh, Prince Tegawanogo. And then after that, I couldn't find like the rest of our picks. So I just went with like our top UDFAs, Raekwon Williams, Noah Togiai, and the great Michael Jaquette. Remember that? But the biggest thing is this man right here, Justin Jefferson, already coming in as an 84 hidden dev. You know the dev's going to be good. Let's see what the kid can do. And now with respect to Justin Jefferson, we got him in the right number. Bryce Treggs was like a death wide receiver that number 18. I straight up just cut him because he had Justin Jefferson's number. That is how hyped, that is how certain I am that Justin Jefferson is not only going to be dominant for the Philadelphia Eagles. He might make it so we don't have to have Jalen Hurts at quarterback. Carson Wentz could thrive and still be here and got back to MVP form. Probably not, but maybe if we had Justin Jefferson in the building. So here's a very quick look at our roster just to get you re-familiar with the time frame, Carson Wentz still hasn't totally, completely shattered all of his stock of being a franchise quarterback, but it has regressed and he is starting to show a lot of worry to a lot of Eagle fans that thought from that 2017 season that he was the next big thing, next big franchise quarterback. Uh, we got Justin Jefferson here as wide receiver one, Corey Clement at running back, Alshon, Jeffries, we got Aguilar, we got Quez on the roster, Ertz and Goddard at tight end, O-line is sensational. Thanks, JP, for everything. The bodyguard. Defensively, Sweat, Jernigan, Cox, and Graham. We got Bradham, Camus, and Davion Taylor. Roddy McLeod and the great Malcolm Jenkins at safety. Secondary room looks a little interesting now knowing, especially one of these players kind of broke out. We got Avante Maddox, Sidney Jones, Jalen Mills, and uh, God love him, Razul Douglas. Absolutely couldn't pull for the guy more. To get that bag that he got from the Green Bay Packers. Awesome player. Shout out the channel once. Yo, my man C4. You're one of the realest out there, bro. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Fly, Eagles fly, baby. So it is time. I don't know how many years I'm going to go. I, I might do five quick years. Just to see the scope of what Justin Jefferson can truly bring to this team. But uh, we're going at least three. We're going to try to get to present day. And see just, you know, how badly we messed this pick up by drafting Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson. For our first free agency, I'm going to let Jason Peters walk so we can kind of usher in the Jordan Mylot era. But I will re-sign Carson Wentz. I'm going to re-sign Kamu Gujar here. We'll let Aggie walk. Clement, I thought about it, but that's an insane amount of money for a normal dev running back. As much as Corey Clement could have been something, uh, yeah, that's way too much. Uh, Jake Elliott, awesome kicker. We're going to bring him back. I'm going to let Mills... And really, the rest of these guys walk. So at the end of year one, Carson Wentz was fine with those numbers. But the big numbers are Justin Jefferson, who finished the year with 81 catches, almost 1,300 yards, and 10 touchdowns. And obviously, in real life, he finished with 88 catches, 1,400 yards exactly, and 7 touchdowns. So, I mean, give or take, that's generally the same kind of start that you have with the Minnesota Vikings here with Philadelphia. It's good. It was, you know, maybe, you know 1,000 yards for Alshon. Aguilar got 9 Eight for Ertz. I mean, I don't really think he had to contend with a whole lot of other targets in Minnesota other than Adam Thielen. Huge year from Fletcher Cox and beat. Like just getting after it on the pass rush. 
And at the end of year one, we unfortunately, we did make the playoffs, 10 and seven, second place in the NFC East, but we were one and done in the first round, losing 27 to 12 against the Rams. It also needs to be shown in this rookie season, Justin Jefferson got absolutely robbed for offensive rookie of the year, coming third behind Justin Herbert and Jordan Love. Yeah, right. So for our first free agent, this is where we're not going to be able to keep up and, and keep the pace and, and do exactly what the Philadelphia Eagles did in real life. There's obviously the offseason where we got, you know, paid big money to get Javon Hargrave away from the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I'm going to chill a little bit on this first free agency period because it happened in real life. And I'm just going to sign a punter. But for this upcoming draft, it'll be interesting to see who's available when we pick to see if we decide to kind of redraft what Philly actually did in the 2021 draft or kind of take our own approach. So I was thinking about trying to trade up and get Devontae Smith at pick 10. However, he went pick six overall to the Ravens. So it kind of made it so I can't see, you know, the hypothetical what if of Justin Jefferson and Devontae Smith playing together. So I'm kind of at a free for all here at pick 20. Landon Dickerson is on the board and he probably won't be there for the second round pick. If we want to keep it consistent and guys in the building, but I feel like this is an opportunity you know, given this draft board, where would C4 go with the names that are available? And for the fact that we don't have, for whatever reason, Miles Sanders in our backfield, our current bat running back is, you know, Wendell Smallwood. I think given the board, knowing how good he's been, give me Javante Williams all day long. So here's how we handled business in the draft. You saw the Javante Williams selection, he comes out 76. I know, like Madden's the only realm that I feel comfortable drafting a running back in the first round. Uh, second round, still wanted to grab a wide receiver. Amon Ross St. Brown was on the board. Unfortunately, no dev trade. He's 70 normal, so it's kind of maybe trying to represent what he would have been as a rookie. Like, I think that's what these are, are the rookie ratings. Uh, then I got Christian Barmore. We had two second round picks. Again, I'm working with the day one Eagles draft picks in real life. So I've had multiple first round draft picks. I've kind of just been trying to juggle around at least till next year's draft, the 2022 draft, where we will be going to Madden generated players. But I kind of want to accurately have Philly's two first round picks from that draft. So I think we are going that front, but we are going to be having you know, a couple more twos and threes and stuff like that. Uh, so I got Barmore here, though, legitimate second round pick. He's 72 with a normal dev. It was kind of BPA. You got Ben Cleveland. I brought in another running back in Chuba Hubbard. We're going to just build this stable up. I got Deo Odengabo just because he was good for us in pink slips. And we finished up with Josh Bledsoe in the seventh. For free agency, I already negotiated a two-year deal for Kelsey. I'm going to bring back Brandon Brooks, Malcolm Jenkins. You'll have Sidney Jones. Even though from like a Madden standpoint, Sidney Jones looks pretty good. I'd rather keep it with Razul Douglas and go with that development. Year two ends eerily similar to year one. We have a pretty good record, 11 and six. However, one and done in the playoffs, we become the Dallas Cowboys as we fall 17 to 10 to the Bears. Like that's gotta be a winnable game. That can't be a game that you lose. Quickly checking in on the stats here, the performances. Wentz was solid, 4,600 yards, 33 touchdowns. Good rookie year from Javante Williams. Another nice season from Justin Jefferson, 83 catches, 1,200 yards and nine touchdowns which is not too far off what he did in real life this past season but it's still kind of far off because he had 108 catches 1600 yards and 10 touchdowns he's still really freaking good just again we don't have uh the you know honestly i can't even explain it we should be able to match what the fuck kirk cousins is doing i want to try to be competitive in this free agency period it's just absolutely absurd look at this fair offer for marcus williams 66 i went 72 i'm fifth the only other player looked even remotely interesting because I'm just going to ignore the fact Cooper Cup's there. That's not about him in this video. Uh, Trey Hendrickson. Now, I would love to get a pass rusher, get younger outside of Brandon Graham. 30 million. I'm offering 40 and I'm six. It's too expensive. Oh, shit. All right. Marcus Williams actually liked our offer the best. Sick. The rest of the draft was fairly solid. Got a 70 wide receiver in the sixth round, a 73 pass rusher in the fourth round. Both normal dev, but Haynes 74 hidden dev, Lewis 73 normal, but Barry the pass rusher 75 hidden dev. Here's our roster as we start year three, and ah, we'll go five years with this rebuild. So Justin Jefferson is a 93 superstar. We got Javante Williams, Carson Wentz, Alshon still doing it, Amon Ross St. Brown with Ertz and Goddard. O-line is still all together. These guys are beast. My lot is developing very nicely. Defensively, literally no real changes. Bradham got an undeserved dev trade increase. Uh, you know, for the most part. Maybe we'll maybe I'll kick Davion Taylor inside the middle linebacker. Maybe we put Bradham middle linebacker and put Taylor on the outside. Either way, we welcome Marcus Williams to the secondary along with Malcolm Jenkins. And uh, it's only a matter of time till Barry takes over for BG as our long-term pass rush help with Josh Sweat, Maddox, Douglas, and Lewis make up the remaining of our secondary. 
Pretty good team. Should, once again, be competitive. Most likely make the playoffs. For free agents here in year three, we'll get to Jordan Mailata in week nine. Obviously, I'm going to try to extend Dallas Goddard. We got Vontae Maddox to resign. We got to try to get Josh Sweat. I got Braden Brooks. I got Lane Johnson. And you know what? Zach Ertz didn't have the regression he had in real life, so I'm going to try to get him back because he's still a 95 superstar tight end that is performing and has a great chemistry with our quarterback, Carson Wentz. So the good news is that we got Jordan Mailata, Zach Ertz, and Josh Sweat, but Dallas Goddard wants to hit the open market, which kind of makes sense if you would extend Zach Ertz. Goddard would want to try to go be a tight end one somewhere. I don't know how to explain this. Literally before the NFC Championship game, I just like I was, I was like, we can't just keep winning these games. But we do. We are in the Super Bowl against the Miami Dolphins. We beat on this journey. We beat Seattle, which is a team that historically is kind of always given the Eagles problems. We beat the Saints, who's a team that's kind of always historically given the Eagles problems. We beat the Packers, which not so much, but it was still a very tough game anytime you can beat Aaron Rodgers. And it sets up a Super Bowl matchup. And we are clearly, anytime we make the Super Bowl in a rebuild, we are going to play the moments. We're going to sit front row and see just what happens. The stats this year are solid 44 yards, 32 touchdowns for Carson Wentz, decent from Javante. 12 and 10 from Alshon, 1,006 from Jefferson. So he's Jefferson's playing very well, but he's abs you know he's not top five. He's not dominating the league, but he's still been pretty damn good. And obviously he's been a vital part of this Eagles team three years into this special rebuild, going to a Super Bowl. Let's go, man! Let's win the Super Bowl. Let's win the Super Bowl in Jerry World. That would be awesome. Oh no. Okay, we're kind of getting slaughtered right now. Oh, no. Where's Nick Foles? I feel like we paid the contract to the wrong guy. Should have kept Nick Foles. This is... Nick Foles would not lose 41-23 in the Super Bowl to the Miami Dolphins. I tell you that right now. Uh, hey, Justin Jefferson 8. They have Joe Burrow. Okay, that's weird. But Justin Jefferson in his first Super Bowl game... 10 catches, 124 yards. That'll do. And we still got two more years to try to win a Super Bowl. All around me are familiar faces. For free agency, we came with a top bid for Connor Williams, who is an 83 start of guard. And he's going to be able to come in right away and replace. Well, you know, we didn't, weren't able to come to turn Brandon Brooks. Moved on there. So we need two starting guards. Now we only need one entering the draft. We had a good haul in this draft. No one below a 65 overall. But the Bella, but we're going to double in the center, a.k.a. just two interior linemen. Both 75 overall. Rob Klein out of Texas Tech. Both 75 with the hidden dev. Graham. I just realized. Graham Graham out of Clemson. Let's go. So for a year four free agents, I'm going to bring back Fletcher Cox for year five. I'm going to wait on Carson Wentz. I'm going to have to see if he can earn himself a new contract. If not, we might be able to get a better quarterback to utilize Justin Jefferson in the fifth and final year of this rebuild. And obviously, guys, you know, Hurts, Quez, Jenkins, Bradham, you just you can't, you know, sorry. Year four, we were second place in the division again. It was a strong record, 10 and 7. However, in the playoffs, unfortunately, we did get a win over Dallas, which is a great morale victory. But in the divisional round, the 15 and 2 LA Rams kind of handled business. Carson Wentz this season was, again, you know, the yards aren't too, too bad. Big year from Javante Williams to focus on Justin Jefferson. There we go. 84 catches leading the team with 1,200 yards and six touchdowns. Big years from Amon Ross St. Brown as well. And Zach Ertz going over 1,000. So we're going to be aggressive in our final free agency period. And of course, Carson Wentz is the top quarterback that's available when we don't pick him up. But I am going to look at Jordan Love, who has had some big time success. I've seen him up there in the MVP ranking, so maybe he's the guy we need under center. Also going to try to get Big Mike Evans to come in and compliment Jefferson and St. Brown. A.J. Terrell in the secondary. And Josie Jewell to man the middle of our defense. And not bad. We got everyone to sign outside of A.J. Terrell. We can just go after a corner in the draft. Not a brag, but we absolutely crushed this draft. In the first round, we got Daryl Justice. That's all, you know, all team first name. Uh, 75 hidden dev. And we got Malone in the second round. 75 hidden death. Let's go. So here's our year five team. Team that you're very familiar with outside of the fact that we have switched quarterbacks. Jordan Love is there. We have Mike Evans to assist in Justin Jefferson. 
in moving the ball down the field. We're able to add Josie Joel to the middle of our defense, getting a guy that, you know, let's be honest, justice, got to get nine picks this season. And how fitting because we can't have nice things. Year five, we go eight and nine and don't even make the playoffs. This video wasn't so much about winning a Super Bowl with the Philadelphia Eagles. More so was it erasing the terrible nightmare that is a very much reality for the Eagles fans that we took. Jalen Rager over Justin Jefferson. And in five years, Justin Jefferson finished with 407 receptions, 5,700 yards. So that's 1,000 yards per year and 37 touchdowns. So maybe it's slight off the mark based off of his Vikings projections, if you will, but he's still in three different area codes above where Jalen Ragger is at. So let me know in the comment section below, fellas. And really the time frame is like anywhere from like 2005 up the earlier, the more recent, you know, going 2019, 18, 2017, the better the roster files are gonna be. But what recent bust pick for your favorite team, would you want to see me redraft, find a replacement, and go on and see what we can do in a five-year Revo? Let me know in the comment section below. I hope you guys are digging this series. It's going to be a nice little compliment that can go along with the retro rebuilds and other content that we'll be dropping, especially you know now that we're starting to hype up and ramp up Madden 23 season. So if you're your first time stopping by, don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button, leave a comment for your favorite team suggestion to redraft, and also do all that for the YouTube algorithm. I very much appreciate it. Love you guys very much, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace out.